Randy, during the season, uh, you were very protective of your players. I'm wondering now that it's over, can you say anything about their lack of buy-in in terms of doing the things you wanted them to do to be successful? I, I think, again, you know, the, the last 30 days of the season uh, was the, the telltale story for our group from a standpoint that our, the things that we were doing at the beginning of the season and winning uh, came to fruition in the last 30 days. 30 days that we weren't going to be able to win hockey games if we continued to do it. We continued to play that way. We lacked an ability to get inside and compete, specifically on the defensive side. And then if you look at our offense and special teams, that's where the difference in, in the games. We didn't win many of the special teams battles in close hockey games. Randy, is the core of this group that you preach to and, and demand a defensive I guess accountability there within this team, and if not, is the club's greatest priority in this offseason to go out and perhaps try to get those people who will adapt to your system? I think it, we're not any different as far as a coaching staff. We're not asking players to do something that they haven't done before or haven't, wouldn't have done in another situation, if be it junior hockey, American Hockey League. Uh, you have to play and you have to compete on the defensive side of the puck with will and commitment. And we did not want to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what, what our struggles were. We've talked about it being a puck possession team and, and trying to change the model of being more than just a rush team. We wanted to create more offensive zone time, thus allowing our offensive players to play with the puck uh, 200 feet away from your net. And when we did that effectively, we were an effective hockey club. But we just didn't do it consistently. And to say that, that uh, there's not going to be an evaluation done at every level and every area of our hockey club. Defense is always going to be paramount. We're going to look. Do you expect to be back next year, Coach? I'm here today. So uh, that's the, the, in this business, you uh, take on the responsibility of w wins and losses and all you do is, is you put your best foot forward, you be honest and forthright with people, and that's what we've tried to do as a coaching staff. Uh, decisions will be made whether this person or that person will not be back, and I'm not the one making those decisions. Uh, Randy, have you had a chance to talk to Brendan Shanahan yet? And if not, or if you have, or what are your thoughts on the, the new management structure that's now in place? Uh, as far as having a formal meeting with Shani, no. Uh, obviously, yesterday, uh, with his appointment, it was noted that I wasn't there. Well, I was working and had a responsibility of one-on-one -on -one meetings with our players, as we do at the end of every season, and um, that took most of the day. Yes, I have had conversations with Brendan Shanahan through the course of um, hellos and and what's going on and how you doing and whatever, but nothing as to say a formal sit-down meeting, no. Coach, uh, is there a point, a moment, or a game in this season that you either regret the most or that opened your eyes in a way that alarmed you about this team, about what might happen? I, I look at it, and uh, I might be short-sighted, but I looked at it when we came back from the L.A., San Jose, uh, Anaheim, we went to Washington. And it seemed from that point uh, we played well enough out in uh, California to, to earn some respect, earn some posture, whatever word you want to describe, confidence. And then we, when we came back and played in, in Washington and then went in Detroit, we seemed to have lost our mojo as a team. And those two games, were quite alarming for the coaching staff and for everybody involved that it something changed. And that's when we felt that, looking back, that was the kind of the turn the tide of our season. Were you able to establish what happened? Well, when we came back into our building and we played well, and, and we probably played two of the better games that we had played in the, in the last five or six and still lost. Played Montreal, and I think we played Tampa, and we felt just by our analysis, scoring chances, credibility of scoring chances, areas,
time with puck, you know, where the scoring chances are coming from, we lost the games. And then our team seemed to, to take on that squeeze the stick mentality that we went to the breathe, breathe, let's breathe. Let's get through this, you know, and we weren't able to, to get it back. Randy, was there a point during this final stretch that you felt at any time that your message either wasn't getting through to these guys or that it was being ignored? I don't know if you could say it wasn't getting through or it wasn't getting ignored. Ignored. It was, uh, it was like you were behind the bench in situations and you saw that, that one, the, the goal, the first goal would go in and the shoulders would shrunk. And it was like uh, that was the, the telltale sign, you know, there wasn't a, a pushback on the next shift, you know, and, and that's really what you ask of your group is when those things are, are going on, you're asking them to dig deep. Shifts after goals are most important. You know, those are the events within the game, and our response was very minimal.